What's up guys? A while ago I posted a video where I showed you my minimalist wardrobe and you guys seem to really like that one so I thought I'm going to go a little bit more into depth on that topic and talk about some tips that you can use to build your own minimalist wardrobe. Of course none of these tips are hard rules that you always have to follow. They are more rough guidelines that you can use to guide you when you are building your own minimalist wardrobe. If you find this video useful and if you like it please hit the like button because it really helps this channel a lot. And let me know in the comments below if you have any further tips on building a minimalist wardrobe. And as always, I post a new video on minimalism every Thursday, so if that is something that you are interested in, don't forget to subscribe. But for now, let's start with the first tip that you can use to build your own minimalist wardrobe. My first tip for building a minimalist wardrobe is to build your wardrobe on a foundation of versatile pieces. That means that you choose clothes that are very simple and for that reason they are appropriate for a lot of different occasions and they also go very well together. And that allows you to really mix and match your entire wardrobe so you can create the maximum amount of outfits with the smallest amount of clothes. And it means that you can dress for many different occasions with very few items. For example, something as simple as a white button-up shirt. You can wear it with jeans, with chinos, with slacks. And it's appropriate for pretty much every occasion. You can dress it down and wear it to class or you can dress it way up and wear it to weddings and fancy occasions. Another tip that you should keep in mind is that you choose neutral colors. Neutral colors tend to be a lot more versatile and they can be very easily mixed. Neutral colors are colors like white, black, gray, but also navy blue and generally more muted colors. And what is so great about neutral colors is that you can really easily mix them all together. When you buy things in very bright colors or very crazy patterns, that means they usually go with only a few other pieces and you have to be really careful with how you put them together into outfits. And with neutral colors, you can't really do much wrong because they all go so well together. And when you have a strong foundation of neutral colors, it's very easy to add in small pops of color if that is something that you're into. What's very important when you're building a minimalist wardrobe is that you make sure that all your clothes really fit perfectly. That means they shouldn't be too large and they also shouldn't be too small. But instead they should just fit right. Because no matter your body type, whether you are very slim or whether you are a bit larger, clothing that fits really well is always the most flattering. Something else that you should keep in mind is that you choose items that are very timeless. Because when you're building a minimalist wardrobe, that means you don't want to go shopping every other week. So you really have to choose things that are going to look good for a long time. So you really want to avoid buying anything that is very trendy and will go out of style very soon. So generally you should watch out for things like very funky prints and very bold colors or very unusual fits. All these things are indicators that it probably isn't as timeless and that it is more of a trendy item. Timeless items tend to be very simple. If you aren't sure if something is timeless, then there are two tests that you can use. The first test I call the grandpa test. Just imagine showing this outfit to your grandpa. What would your grandpa say about this outfit? Would he be shocked or confused about the crazy things you're wearing? Then this is probably a sign that this is not very timeless. When you are wearing something that is very simple and very timeless, like a basic white t-shirt, then this is most likely something that your grandpa or your grandma would would approve with. Another test you can use is the James Dean test. Just imagine James Dean or if you are a woman imagine a female style icon from the past wearing the item. Would it look out of place or would it kind of make sense that they are wearing it? If it looks really out of place then this can also be a sign that this is not a very timeless item. And keep in mind that this is really only a very rough guideline. This is in no way a hard rule. You can definitely buy things that don't pass the grandpa test or the James Dean test if you feel like they are simple timeless items that you will be able to wear for a long time. Just trust your own judgment. Something that I found very useful when I built my own minimalist wardrobe 
is to start with the pants. To me, my pants are kind of the foundation of my outfits because I own very few pants, but I wear them a lot. So take a look at the pants you own and at the pants that you really like to wear and then think about what kind of shirts and shoes and jackets would go well with those pants that you own. So ideally, your shirts and jackets and sweaters should match with all the pants you own so you can get the maximum use out of them and create the maximum amount of different outfits. One of the core principles of minimalism is that less is more, or more specifically that less but better is more. When it comes to a minimalist wardrobe, that means that you own less items, but that you own very high quality items. Because when you're building a minimalist wardrobe, you want your clothing to last very long and you also want it to look good, so you really get the most out of the few things that you own. And that doesn't necessarily mean that you buy brands, because what I have found is that brands often are not a very good indicator of quality because often you just pay for their marketing and their branding and not for the quality of the items. I very rarely buy new clothes but whenever I do I make sure that I find ethical and sustainable brands that really use good materials and that are made very well. I also try to buy used items as much as I can because when you buy used items then nothing new has to be produced and that is so much more sustainable. Alright, so these were my tips for building a minimalist wardrobe. Those were some more general rules or general guidelines that you can use to build your own minimalist wardrobe. I think I will make a more specific video in the future where I talk a bit more about a step-by-step -step approach that you can use to go from your current wardrobe to a versatile minimalist capsule wardrobe. If that is something that you would be interested in seeing, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss it. Let me know your thoughts about minimalist wardrobes in the comments below and like this video if you found it helpful. And I will see you guys if you want in my next video.